Hello, my name is Artie Simon, a Solutions Architect here at AWS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an existing Microsoft SQL Server database running on Windows Server and replatform it onto a Linux server using a scripting tool provided by AWS called the Windows to Linux Replatforming Assistant for Microsoft SQL Server. One of the most compelling reasons to run a SQL Server on Linux as opposed to Windows Server is cost optimization. A portion of EC2 license included Windows instance cost is actually Windows Server license cost. There are a couple of example comparisons here. Suppose we are using a SQL Server standard edition license included on an M5 2x large. Doing a simple replatform onto Linux Server can result in 21% cost saving. In the SQL Server Bring Your Own License scenario, we can see even better contrast. If we look at the EC2 compute cost, a Linux instance is 49% cheaper than its equivalent Windows instance. AWS has Windows to Linux replatforming assistant for Microsoft SQL Server databases, a scripting tool that helps you move existing SQL Server database from Windows to Linux operating system. It can work with any Windows Server VMs hosted in AWS or other cloud providers or with on-premises environments running SQL Server 2008 or later. It works using a simple yet robust backup and restore mechanism. The tool is made up of two essential components. The first one is a PowerShell backup script. This script takes a backup of the source databases and uploads them to an encrypted Amazon S3 bucket. The script then hands over to AWS Systems Manager Automation document to do the restore part. Through the SSM automation, database backups from the Amazon S3 bucket will be downloaded, then restored to the target database on the EC2 Linux instance. You can provide your own pre-configured EC2 Linux instance with SQL Server on it, or you can have the automation launches and configures a new EC2 Linux instance for you. All right, let's now see it in action. First of all, we need to make sure that we meet all the prerequisites before we use the Windows to Linux replatforming assistant for Microsoft SQL Server. The PowerShell script needs certain permissions to run. So let me navigate to IAM and show you. I've created a user in IAM and I have set an IAM policy for this user with the required permissions. This policy can be found on the AWS documentation page here. So if we navigate to the setting up section and scrolling down, here you can see the IAM policy. Now let's head to our SQL Server on Windows. Okay, my SQL Server is in a private subnet, so I'm going to access it from my Bastion host. Here I am in my Bastion host, and I am connected to the SQL Server on Windows. You can see that I have a database here. So let's try to run a simple query to get the row counts of the tables. Okay, now from the Bastion host, we will RTP into the SQL Server on Windows and kickstart the replatforming process. Okay, so I'm now in the SQL Server on Windows. And as per the documentation, there are two more things that I need to do here before I can use the Windows to Linux replatforming assistant for SQL Server. The PowerShell script uses the AWS tools for PowerShell, so I need to make sure that I got it installed on this machine. I've already got it installed on this machine, but in your case, if you haven't got it installed, then you need to run this command to install it. Then I need to set the profile using the IAM credential that I showed earlier. For this machine, I also already have it set up as the default profile, but let us confirm once more by running this command. Okay, so I've got this profile set up. Now we are ready to essentially use the reperforming assistant. So let's go to the documentation page. And we go to setting up section and we just simply click this and download this file. This is the PowerShell script. So I've downloaded the PowerShell script and I put it in the C SQL demo folder. So using PowerShell, I'm going to CD into that location and quite simply just execute the script. And as soon as we execute this script, we'll be greeted with an intuitive user interface. So we'll put our SQL Server name that we want to take the backup from here, which is the local server. Put in the credential. Now I can specify the database name, comma separated, if needed. 
I'm just going to say all database. And for this one, I will want to specify a local path for the database backup. So the script will take a backup and put it into this temporary location before it uploads it to S3 bucket. Now as for the destination, you can either choose to have the tool restore it to an existing EC2 instance, but for this demo, I'm going to let it create a new EC2 instance. So I'm going to have to specify a few parameters here. For the instance type, I will say M5A X large. As for the subnet, I will put an existing subnet that I've already got, obviously a private subnet. Specify a key pair. And quite obviously, the region where I want to deploy this to. Now in the profile name, I will put in the profile that I've set up on this machine. I'll leave the profile location blank because you only need to fill this in if the profile that you want to use is not the default profile. And the IAM instance role is the IAM instance role that we are going to attach to the target EC2 instance. So I'm going to put in an instance role that I have previously created. And as simple as that, I click this button to start the migration process. This will take a while. Now what it's doing right now is it's doing a backup of the database and it's going to upload it to S3. And whilst the script is running, if we navigate to our AWS console in the S3 section, you will see that it creates this temporary bucket to hold the backup. Now that the script has finished executing, let us head to AWS console and see what we've got. Back at AWS console, if we navigate to Systems Manager and into Automation, we see that there is a successful execution of an automation for the restore. Now let's navigate to EC2. Prior to executing the script, I had two EC2 instances. One of them is Bestium and the other one is SQL Server on Windows. Now I've got a third instance here. And if we look into the detail, surely this is a Linux instance with SQL Server on it. Now let's try to get into this instance and see the content. But before we do that, note that the script assigns a random SA password. So we're going to have to go first and reset it. Now to do that, I will use SSM session manager to establish a terminal session with this instance. Okay, to reset the password, we'll do sudo. First, we need to stop SQL Server. Set the password. And now, restart SQL Server. Okay, we can now terminate this session. Back in the EC2 console, I'm going to do one more thing here in the context of this demo. I will be connecting to the SQL Server on Linux instance from my best unit host. So I will need to make sure this instance's security group allow for inbound SQL connection. So I'm going to action, security, change security group. Pick this one that allows inbound SQL connection. And grab the private IP address of this instance. Now we can head to our best unit host. Okay, here's our Bastion host, and I'll paste in the IP address of the Linux instance, put in the password. And now here I am connected to SQL Server on Linux. And as you can see, we have our database here. And if we start a query, now let's run the same query that we used to get the list of tables along with its row count. Execute that. So our tables are populated, and if we compare that with what we had on Windows, we get the exact number of tables and row counts. I encourage you to check out the documentation in the video description below. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this informative.